this has been a long time coming. Um, I feel like I know you from a long time, even though we're somewhat strangers. But I don't even, how do I even know you? I feel like somebody messaged me on Instagram. I was like, hey, this guy is cool. Check him out. And I checked it out and, emailed, and messaged you. Is that- That's exactly <laughs> what may have happened. So I had a friend that reached out to me that saw my videos. And then he was like, hey, you know, there's this girl named Christina. She's on YouTube. She's amazing. Um, check out her videos. And then I, I went and checked it out. <laughs> yeah man i went and checked it out and he was like hey what you know i kind of messaged her so I'll, I'll reach out to her and let her know that i'm interested in collaborating and that's how that all worked out and you know we started to chat and here we are today yeah. a bit late you know because this was in the making for some time but yeah. you know, better late than never right i know and i feel like timing is actually perfect because it's like your story is not necessarily have an ending but it's a start and a finish somewhat there's some some sort of a full circle even for my story to some extent so i feel like there's no better time than no because we'd have to get back together and say some some new things happen let's talk again <laughs> right, so, so, absolutely so, yeah. absolutely it's been a long time coming finally glad to be on here with you um this is paul McAllister. his uh, youtube link is kenneth concepts concepts uh-huh. right. Got it right. Yep. And you know yep, me, yep. Christina from my soul, my Canadian immigrants. Um, we're both Canadian immigrants who are now not in Canada. <laughs> I guess they, they'll they'll hear a little bit more about that, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, you have to stay till the end. Mm-hmm. Stay mm-hmm. till the end for that one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Um, I think, you know, there's, of course, a bit of your story on your, your YouTube channel, a bit of my story on my YouTube channel, but from start to finish, there's no one video. So this is kind of it, right? Um, Tell all. (laughs) (laughs) So tell me now, when, first of all, you were in Jamaica when you moved to Canada or were you in the Cayman Islands? No. So yeah, I was in the Cayman Islands at the time. Yeah. 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 So I, I technically went straight from Cayman to Canada, but of course, in any trip, I have to stop over in Jamaica. Yeah, I started just, yeah, I was in Jamaica for a bit, but effectively moved from Cayman straight to, straight to Canada. All right. Yeah. So, so, give, so tell me now, like you said, you're in Cayman Islands and you're like, you know what? I love this no tax land. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to a country that probably has the most taxes in the world. Walk me through that process. Like, why, no. why Canada? Absolutely. So, so basically the Canadian journey and even thinking about that was something that was conceptualized way before it came. And oh. um, I, I don't know if I had included this story, but what happened was came at, Canada was always on the sites to do, right? And in fact, I actually had applied for school. I was actually going to go and do oh. a master's in Regina. So I applied for school, um, got through my work permit. Um, my partner at the time, she, we weren't married as yet, applied for her work permit to got turned down. That kind of shifted the dynamic a bit. Um, Wait, your student visa got turned down? No, my student visa was approved, but oh, her work permit, because we were, we were um, common law. Common law. So mm. Exactly, exactly. So I was able to apply for her work permit. Um, but that got refused so that kind of created a little a little you know stagnation in that process right so we did reapply actually got through um and that happened um but then at the time i got a job off in cayman and then i decided that hey you know let's go to cayman first you know but in the grand scheme of things canada was always on the mission because i knew canada would have been a permanent option for us Mm -hmm. right whereas cayman you know you're on a work permit you know it's kind of more temporary um, you know, and having done the research and heard all, all the great stuff about Canada, that was always the mission. So, mm-hmm. you know, was able to go to Cayman, do the necessary preparations and then lift off to Canada. Yep. Oh. So what was it like a long term vision? Like, you know, so that, okay, Canada is more of a permanent place. Do you have family in Canada? No, 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 no. So no family in Canada. Um, well, I, I have a cousin over there, but we're, we're distant. I actually just got to know her when I actually went to Cayman, uh, to Canada, sorry. Um, but yeah, no family, we just kind of went. But basically the initial thing for Canada was just, hey, you know, it's a great country, it's a permanent option. We didn't have a timeline on it. We knew that minimum it would be three years, but we had just decided to just go and see how things flow. Um, and that's kind of exactly what, what happened. You know, we kind of just saw how things flowed and, you know, we, we got established, did our thing and yeah, no, no, we're not in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> The plot thickens. <laughs> the plot thickens. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so I know your story. So I know you started out um, through the school route. 
um, that is a route that a lot of people take mm -hmm. and go through. What was that like for you and what was your contemplation before going to Canada? Initially, I actually thought it was near impossible because I saw the sloofy and I was like, why rough? Um, and I think that's the hurdle that a lot of people have to get over or have to get through because it's really expensive to go to school. So I was like, school, yes. So getting a job in Jamaica actually almost felt near impossible as well. And, um, you know, I brought it to my parents. I was like, I got into school. <laughs> um, and I have to pay for it, you know, and my daddy, my daddy is all about me going to Canada. I was actually surprised. And he was like, yeah, man, we can get this started out. Oh, okay, nice. so Canada, and it happened like really quickly in terms of from approval because I, I wanted to go to Centennial first it was too far away from where my aunt lived got okay. into Humble but when I got into Humble I had just enough time to apply for my study permit and I got rejected because I was missing some documents mm -hmm. then reapplied and got in through just in time and yeah I got to school and it was just I didn't even have time to think about it. Um, I yeah. think I don't. I only really process it, process it. Maybe weeks after I was there, I was like, okay, it's actually here because I literally got to school late. So yeah. I landed the morning, slept for three hours, woke up, and took a two-hour bus to school. Wow. So that that was it. Um, and yeah, long-term goal was to get permanent residency, stay in Canada, work in Canada because I just saw better earning potential in Canada. Um, yeah. And no, I'm not in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> there we go there we go there we go no no that's that's awesome and as mentioned so i know i know the school thing as, as mentioned is a, is a big opportunity for a lot of people and a lot of people take it uh -huh. um and i guess you can kind of delve into it a, a bit more but one of my things and what what I, I generally caution people about is to not take the school option if that is not your only option right uh -huh. And I, I was particularly in tune to that because I was originally going to go on school and, well, I, and I'm kind of happy that it didn't work out that way because I would have had to spend a lot of money. Um, uh -huh. You know, eventually, I, you know, I, I, I gained eligibility for express entry and that's how I transitioned. And I'm kind of glad it worked out that way. But I know many people, they do view the school option as the only option mm -hmm. when it may not be, not be. you know mm -hmm. yeah you know so that's definitely something you know but i'm glad it, it, it worked out for you and i think in, at your age and, and stage at that time it was perfect you know yeah. because that was the natural progression of, of where you were in life um mm -hmm. so yeah awesome 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 yeah and i think too because it, the school option works out for some people depending on like you said the age and the stage that they're at um because a lot of people i find come say for instance who didn't go to school come there and have trouble getting into the workforce in their field um is it because i didn't go to school in canada i don't know it's it is maybe right yeah, um yeah, it's, it's really yeah. hard to tell but generally an employer looking at a resume is going to look for or look at more recognized schools in canada than than an international student or an, or somebody from overseas sorry not international student but so i mean it's for some people some people end up migrating through express entry and having to go back to school which is okay i think because then you're not paying yeah. three times the school fee as an international exactly. student exactly. so that's yeah. probably the which best I, way to do it yeah which i i did you know but we'll, we'll get into that part of the story i guess you know to become an immigration consultant i had to go back to school so i went to humble but yeah, we can we can chat about that a bit more later. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, that's the right way to do it. I'll get the permanent yeah. residency and then pay half the school fee or a third. There we go. All right. So you said express entry was the way that you went through, which yeah. I, I mean, of course, when I was moving to Canada, there was no express entry. In fact, I was actually scared, crapless. <laughs> When I finish school, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Because I only went to school for one year. I get yeah. one year work permits. What am I going to do? So I had LMIA as my option A, provincial yeah. nominee program as option B, and express entry was actually my third option because it never opened until the following year. And when it didn't oh. open, there wasn't enough information to be able to feel confident about it, you know? So okay. but by the time you were ready, there was express entry. Ooh. What yeah. What was that like for you? What were your points? Did you use a consultant? Like, yeah yeah tell me about yeah that. yeah so at the time um so 
Express Inch, I had heard about it. I had a few co-workers at the time that did the process. Um, you know, so at that time, I was, I was kind of sensitized to it a bit, starting to do the research and stuff. And basically, based on experiences of others, I was like, hey, you know, this can actually work out. Um, the people that I was interacting with at the time, they hadn't used consultants. So I was like, all right, then, you know, I, sh I should be able to do this on my own as well. You know, um, I knew in terms of age, you know, the big, the big eligibility criteria, as you know, is age, work experience, education and language ability. So having assessed, done my own assessment of where I was, I was like, hey, I, I'd be a good candidate for that. Um, so when I did the preliminary, preliminary stuff in terms of West and, and um, um, the English test and got the, the scores, um, I was at about 456, I think. Um, and I knew that about 450 was a good to go. Um, so I did that. You and your wife together? Points yes, together. yes. Okay. Both of us, yeah, both of us together, um, which were, which worked out pretty well. Um, so we did that. We got the invitation, and then you know we we, we went to Canada. You know, but for the most part, I didn't use a, a consultant. Um, you know, it's it's not a necessity, as you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's really assessment of, of self and kind of knowing where what your strengths are. You know, if you have any concerns or any, any, any I guess, doubts about, you know, your ability to, to kind of navigate certain processes, then definitely, you know, reach out to a consultant, you know, get that help that you need. You know, yeah. if it is that you feel that you can navigate it yourself, then cheers, you know, go, go ahead and do it for sure, for uh -huh. sure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I agree. I agree because I didn't yeah. use a consultant for that either. And the only time I did use a consultant when I was... My, of course, my visa got rejected. My first ever application. I don't have no time to figure it yeah. out. I mean, just yeah. just close my eyes because it was like, <laughs> I feel like it was like, I mean, nobody ever, you know, the, the fees that, you know, the expenses that are coming up when you get to Canada. You don't want to spend no more money than you have to. But it's an it's an investment to pay for yeah. a, a consultant when you need one, when you feel like you don't really have enough confidence in your ability to do it definitely get a consultant because i did that for the first first one yeah um, i went I actually went back i don't know like sometimes i'm afraid of this consultant stuff i went back to like my emails yeah. with this guy and i literally yeah. emailed him every day <laughs> story of my life <laughs> i was like oh my god i would not like to have me as a client <laughs> you know, but the important yeah. thing is that you, I mean, can you, I mean, it's 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 tricky. Can you? You're, this person is getting up and planning to transition their entire life. You can imagine that they're anxious, they're nervous, they're everything. You know, so I just try to empathize and yes. you know, just be patient. Yes. And yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I feel like yeah. we, having experienced it, are like the perfect people for to help others because we're like we know like no i have of course looking back i'm like she's oh my feeling kind of christina if i if i had none of this experience i'd be like mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. nope no girl <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely yeah so all right so 450 plus plus points um plus points, that was good yeah. that was good that was good no i think the range is about the same maybe 460 now yeah, 460. I think the last the last federal draw was about 470, but you know, based on the pandemic, um, you know, there is a backup in the pool, you know, because they're oh. focusing on people inland, um, oh. you know. But yeah, you know, I, I I believe that over time it will trend downwards again. You mm -hmm. know, not too low, of course, because yeah, you know how that goes. But yeah, yeah we'll see how it goes. For sure. Okay. So that's it for today, guys. I am Paul from Kenny's Concepts. I'm Christina from As Told by Canadian Immigrants. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Definitely check out our respective channels and stay tuned for this piece of the Christina Paul story. Thanks Don't forget for to like, subscribe, share, all that wonderful stuff. Absolutely. See you in the video. Bye, guys.